It's time to step inside the Octagon with your host, Ike Feldman. What's up, y'all? Happy, it's always a fight week, so happy another fight week. Happy June 13th week of fight week. And this week's local fight week is Flex Fight Series Glow Bash this Friday, June 17th. Go to the Flex Fight Series Instagram to find out a lot more information to see the wonderful high production promotions that they're putting together for this Friday's event. And one of the fighters that is featured in that promo, David Pardo on Instagram at L. One F E Master Life Master. If you're not cool enough to figure it out, it took me uh, a long time. I was like, "What the hell is this symbol? The character at the front?" He goes, "It's an L." I go, "Oh, oh, Life Master. I got it." And David Pardo is the interview for this week's Ike Dagon. He is coming up right now. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Ike Feldman from the Iketagon. Um, or as my next guest, his senseis or coaches or professors, they know me as Gary from Maxim. I'm being joined by one of their star pupils on the rise. Uh, I met him or saw him. He, he doesn't remember. They, they were in the zone. They were in the Manimal zone for the Manimal training camp. David Pardo. Follow him on Instagram, L1FE Life Master. Again, on Instagram. He fights this Friday, June 17th for Flex Fight Series, the Globe Bash. For anybody who's into like Day Glow, I know they did some stuff at City Field or lecture EDC carnivals in the city. I feel like Chris Machi uh, and uh, Nick Canobio, they're doing it right. They're playing up to their audience. Again, David Pardo. What's up, man? I appreciate your time. Thank you, man, for having me on your uh, podcast. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, in my current environment, you know, nature. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Uh, not enough people take advantage of the uh, the Long Island uh, environment or nature. I, I feel like uh, so many times people just, if, especially if you're in the middle of the island, like I grew up uh, in Ronkonkoma. And it was like an event once once a year to go to like uh, Jones Beach or Robert Moses or once a summer. And it's like as I've gotten older, it's like you kind of appreciate the nature that we're surrounded by. Um, yeah, man. So uh, by your element, do you mean like you just you like the silence, you like the calm? Is, is this a normal routine or is this a specific fight week routine? All of those in one for sure, because it is. um a kind of focus that I want to hear while I'm in the ring, which is silent and more of a um, just moment thing. You know, you're in the moment when you're in the wild. So you really get to appreciate how, um, how nature treats you and stuff and like how you treat everything else, you know? So, uh, yeah, fight week, you know, I, I tend to kind of get away from all the, modern shit like technology and stuff like too much chemicals like i eat clean you know i i go on like diets like vegan diets vegetarian diets um and you know just just make sure my energy levels are um good enough you know like my confidence is built up enough and there's so many ways to do that and my way personally is to go out in nature and do what i gotta do you know like get some kicks over there you know punch a tree or whatever <laughs> oh my gosh like yuri Prohaska over here uh, are you gonna are you gonna do the, sh the shaved head are we gonna have the, the rat tail hanging off the top of the head <laughs> uh shit i don't know about that i don't got hair i would probably get a little a little um i'll pick my hair out though I'll, you know raise my as far as I go, <laughs> got you, got you. Um, a little choppy out there. Mother Nature is getting in the way of our of our signals, but it, it's all good. Uh, we're hearing you for the most part, man. You are in your element. Do you do you kind of uh, 
attract more to the 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 silent killers in the mixed martial arts world uh, again uh, credit to conor mcgregor for getting the sport on espn for getting the huge sale like he was a intricate part of bringing so much casual attention to the sport for the true martial artists to shine now like a, a hamza chamaev or as we just saw this past weekend glover Teixeira and yuri prohaska i feel maybe in the past they would have been swept under the rug but now that they're on espn where uh, still in the midst of the Conor McGregor era, these true martial artists or maybe more humble martial artists are getting uh, more attention. Uh, do you attract to that style? Um, I certainly do look up to uh, certain fighters that, like, you know, have this type of uh, passion that they build up in their minds. Like, literally, like, I've heard a quote from Conor say that the game drove him crazy. And <laughs> it's true, you know, because... You have to do everything possible to move to the next level. You can't stay in one level. You can't stay the same. You have to change. It's always change. Um, so, you know, I'm going with the current. I mean, uh, definitely one of the fighters I do look up to the most for my style personally is um, the high level kickboxers, like um, kind of point karate guy, though. Uh, Raymond Daniels, that's one. Oh, um, Michael, Michael Venom, Venom Page. Page. Yeah, there you go. You know, Did you guys. ever see their match on YouTube where it was like there's like a pause in their karate point finding match and they go into a dance contest? Did you ever see that? No, I don't think I've seen that, but that sounds crazy. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to do this in the midst of the interview. It's pretty awesome. It's a couple of years. They're like in the heat of the moment and it's like a stop in the action. It's, uh, the DJ or in the whatever the gymnasium to start playing music and they get to a dance competition. I'm like, it's amazing. Uh, now, my apologies. I have not seen uh, one of your previous fights, but when you are in, in the midst of the fight, uh, I've spoken to uh, undefeated Bellator fighter, Justin Montavo. Very calm, who was also at the Manimal training camp. Very calm, cool, collected in his everyday life. But when it's fight night, when he steps into the cage to, to do his work, to paint his masterpiece, just kind of, I don't know, he just expresses himself like he's, he's, he's larger than life. Can, can you take me through how you are on fight night? Like what, what, what type of persona will we expect June 17th this Friday in the Flex Fight Series cage? You know, I will definitely expect the same feelings you feel before going into the cage, like as soon as you're about to walk out. I definitely prepare myself for that, just one that, that one moment. And I, you know, go with affirmation. I tell myself, you know, I like tell the body, because, you know, the body, like, a joke, a bad joke of you saying, oh, I'm not good at this, or like as a joke, like it doesn't know the difference. You're basically telling the body it's not good enough. So it's good to um, kind of just get, get, you know, you know, get really connected with yourself in that fight night. I, I do believe in that too. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of different techniques out there, man. <laughs> so yeah, one, one true though is affirmation. Affirmation is one of my go-tos. Do you uh, constantly, again, we're being joined by David Pardo, Pardo, the interruption. You could take that, you could market it, uh, put it on some t-shirts, make a merch website, the davidpardo.com website or something. Uh, follow him on Instagram at L one F E master life master. It took me freaking 10 minutes or a couple of days to figure it out. Uh, but David, uh, do you go, uh, how much do you, I don't know. Uh, exercise the, the mental repetitions of the sport. It seems like you're very cerebral, very aware of your surroundings. Uh, I just learned out that uh, I'm an empath, meaning like I can just, I, I feel the environment around me. I'm not essentially like numb to things and kind of act like a, a, a numb skull, but uh, in the sense that I, I could feel that Oh, this person was cut off in conversation. Oh, this, this person is, uh, he means, well, maybe they're not feeling well. I can almost feel like their anxieties or their, their, their energies in a way. Um, are you connected to your environment in that sense? Or are you just almost in connected to your own, uh, uh, your own, what would it be like your own broadcast center? Like you're just worried about you or can you feel your surroundings in a sense? 
Well, that what you are saying is real. You know, this is something that I've came up to learn about more off more lately that there's a certain connection that's like macrocosmic. It's not it's not as it's not as bigger than we think. And once we once we subscribe to it, we definitely start seeing a lot of it in our day to day life. And, you know, it's um, it's like a network. It's like a, it's like a metaphysical social media almost. And you could kind of just link to whatever, like you said, like empath, empath, you know, the empath thing is, yep. is you, you're very sensitive to those, those, those energies, you know, those, those magnetic energies around you. So yeah, you know, that plays the game in, in, in basically anything like you enter, a, let's say you enter a bar and you feel everybody like, okay, this guy is not a good guy. You see a guy and you're like straight up, like, okay, that person does not look like a good person. That is real. That is yourself telling you to stay away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because um, only what's within you knows it all. And once you tap into that, yes, you will start seeing a lot of uh, alignments. You know? And man, I'm, I'm just happy I know this at a young age because you could save your ass from a lot of deep shit. <laughs> and how old are you? I'm 19. Nice. How long have you been training? I saw in your profile picture again on Instagram, Life Master. Uh, is that you? Is that is that a young and David? Yeah, that's me. I I was a karate point fighter at eight years old to eleven or twelve. Uh, my dojo got shut down, so that kind of put me in depression mode when I was at a very young age. So it kind of awoke me to a lot of shit at a young age because uh, I just loved the sport, but I couldn't do it because you know I, I didn't have the only person I was depending on at the time was um. One of my one of my senseis, uh, he's still out there. You know, we're still in contact. We're going nice. to get the dojo back together. You know, I'm going to get my black belt. We're going to have some students and stuff. And, you know, all good stuff coming coming forth. Because um, I love karate. You know, that's my base. That's, that's my how I started, you know. And I said, I'll keep fighting. I'll keep doing my style regardless. And, you know, after that, you know, I, st I stayed being athletic. I stayed. Rest, I did a little bit of wrestling in oh, middle wow. school, um, high school. That's when I started doing kickboxing and all that, you know, like around that age. Yeah. Nice. And um, were, were you being made fun of with the karate guys, especially with the rise of the UFC and then people like Wonder Boy and as we mentioned, Raymond Daniels and Michael Venom Page kind of holding it down. And, and even McGregor, he's kind of like combined karate and boxing. He, he shoots or taekwondo and boxing, karate and boxing. He's kind of, he's in and out of the pocket, but he, he delivers like his, his left hand, like a catapult. Like he's coming in with that momentum and then he, he slings the left hand. Uh, did it take a while for people to respect uh, the, the art of karate in your journey? You know, I, I wasn't really focused on that type of stuff. I know what you're smart, talking about, but smart, I wasn't really smart. focused on that type of stuff. I I honestly just embraced who I was. I wasn't really focused on the outside world. I was more likely to, um, in that time, I was more likely to just choose what I like to do, you know, not to follow the the, the current, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, boxers are better than, than this. Or, nah, like, I wasn't really in tune to that stuff. You know, I was... Um, whatever I had learned, any influences stuck with me, still is with me. And, uh, you know, you know, so I, I like how it all came about, though. All these famous point fighters came about. So now it just makes me believe more into my style. You know, get, you get me. Amazing. Amazing. Have you uh, uh, have you fought before? Like uh, if, for Flex? Yeah, uh, this is going to be my fourth time around fighting for Flex fight. Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. And can you feel the the difference in the stand up? Like, are you just like most of your? Uh, are you? I'm assuming you're a black belt. Uh no, I stopped at green belt in karate. Uh, kickboxing, I never really did it as a kid, so I didn't go to I didn't go through belts. But I adapted a certain style that yes, it's like a black belt style. Like, are, <laughs> are like your fights stuff. on YouTube? Can we uh, Google them or YouTube them? I have one fight on YouTube. It's one of my, it's my last fight. It was a decision loss to um, a Muay Thai fighter called Vinny Malillo. Uh, it's just, I think it's on private um, videos because they try to like copyright it. So I just kept it on, but I don't think there's any fights that Flex posted though. 
is that how you jumped in the uh, the wonderful promo again for the June seventeenth Flex Fight series uh, this Friday? Uh, did you tell him like, hey, I'll, I'll do the promo for free if you put the fight in private? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I didn't. No, I didn't say that, but. You know, I hope they post my next fight, though. That would be amazing because, you know, I'd get to see myself, like, in action where other people could see myself, too, in action, you know. So that would be, that'd be nice. What was the key, uh, uh, I don't know, mindset following the loss? Uh, I've heard all different strategies and how people wear the loss in their life. Uh, was it just, I'm young, there's many more opportunities ahead, this is amateur Maybe your coaches, Anthony or Charlie, they're telling you, hey, this is the time to learn what works, what doesn't uh, before you turn pro. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, you know, they told me this is going to be like a a way for me. Like I wanted to fight a month right after because that's how crazy I am. But they told me, listen, man, don't be <laughs> stupid. This is amateur. You know, this stuff is whatever, you know, it's um, and, I, and then I believe that I was like, yeah, you know, this this wasn't really a loss. This was kind of a win for me with from from for my own good, you know, for my own good. It was a win. But yes, on record, amateur record, it was a loss. But it was for me, it was like an opening to to really do what matters, you know, and we've been working on these these moves that, that are killers, man. These these fast moves that are just killers. And like, I get to see now, okay, this is what, it, what really matters, you know? And I am preparing myself every day and mentally, uh, emotionally, just, just uh, subscribing myself to that, to that, to that, you know? Are you fighting lightweight or featherweight? I'm fighting 155, yes. Lightweight. Okay. I was, dude, you have the perfect frame for, what are you about, 5'11", 6? Six foot? <laughs> nah, I'm I'm five ten. Five ten. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe he's on a good day. I don't know. You got some tree trunk legs, man, for a lightweight. Like you <laughs> might have some uh this uh Benson Henderson type of legs, man. Some uh Eddie Alvarez type of legs. Uh <laughs> Eddie God Alvarez. For, God forbid or Michael Chandler type of legs, but you could you could kick somebody uh behind the ear with the, the just the ease like you got Wonder Boys type of flexibility with uh, Michael Chandler's legs. So it's it's a dangerous combination. Um, uh, do you have you subscribed to like uh, I know you said uh, you learned kickboxing later. Um, Joe Rogan's talked about he, he goes to one coach like, oh, why are you doing this when he was uh, competing in Taekwondo or kickboxing or boxing? Um, have you found a nice harmony to sync all the styles together? You know, you got it right on the spot. I mix all these styles that I watch and I just come up with shit that works for my body type because I have a lot of body intelligence. People don't understand that body intelligence is so important. People talk about stretching every day and stiffness and all this. Like, man, if you know how to work around your body, you get to, to throw shit out there that like only you could do, you know? And that's what matters because if you only, if you're the only one that can do what you're doing, then you're pretty much your own creation. You know, you get me like there's not, there's not another Venom page that throws, you know, blitz like he does. There's not another um, uh, Raymond that throws the same, like fucking 720. Nobody's he, doing a 720. 720 <laughs> like <laughs> you get me like that's because they have a lot of body intelligence and a bunch of fucking fights doing the same shit so that's where i want to get to i want to do a bunch of fights learning my body you get me and uh how are you feeling on the ground i know you said you you wrestled in uh in high school how's uh how have you complemented with the uh, the jujitsu game have you swung by the maxim facility are you guys doing your own thing jujitsu wise at vma uh, can, can you tell me about your uh your ground game you know I was thinking about a lot of that shit this year, like how I need to put myself in that in that area more <laughs> because it's not sexy. It's not fun, <laughs> man. It's like I'm not showing my uh, a new fan to mixed martial arts Khabib's highlight reel. I'm showing them Connor. Uh, I'll admit that I'll, I'll show them the Connor highlight reel. But, you know, <laughs> you, you need that complete complement of uh, skills and disciplines. Definitely. Yeah. 
yeah, definitely. I'm, 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 you know, going to start going to Maxim because, you know, those guys are killers, man. Those guys, you know, those guys come from the, the Matt Sarah, you know, uh, you know, the, like those guys are killers, like the real deal. So, you know, my coach is telling me like, yo, just, just, just fucking do jujitsu, bro. Like if you want to do MMA, just do jujitsu. That's what, you know? So yeah, I'm going to do that for a couple, couple, uh, couple months, if not two years. And then I'll think about uh, my MMA fight, you know, um, because like you said, you need the perfect skill set for that. So, uh, yeah, um, my wrestling was kind of canceled because of my behavior in school. I used to be a high head with what you what what we call is a high head. All right, we call it a high head, but you guys you guys probably understand it more by reckless, like recklessness, like. <laughs> I was just not doing what I should have done in school to be competing in wrestling as much as I wanted to. So that kind of just drove me away from the ground stuff. And I was like, no, nah, like, I like striking. That's my thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, you, you could knock out the wrestling coach. Not not advising that. Not advising that, of course. But <laughs> yeah, man, it, it, the same. I went to summer school three years in a row. My grades were, thank goodness, in New York State, I think 65 was passing. I was, I was floating around uh 67 69 like my highest grade in high school was an 82 um it was in like uh maybe it was like sports marketing or something like or no gym i think it was gym <laughs> something um but yeah man that's why it's like i discovered martial arts right after high school it was a, it was a way for me to like filter that energy and yeah. you mentioned reckless you meant to mention a hothead that just means it's a gift man it's a gift it's extra energy that you have that other people don't have you just have to find the right avenues and i believe martial arts the path that you on is the right avenue for somebody with extra energy so it's all yeah. it's all learning dude i was i was doing the promos the other day and um i'm gonna uh, shout out to uh um uh what's this ah, trojan trojan warrior shout out to trojan warrior he was like bro like you can't stay still you got a lot of energy man because i was just like fucking running around doing weird shit like while waiting for the promos to be like filmed and he was like yo you got a lot of energy man i like that <laughs> shout out to trojan now, speaking trojan. of the june 17th flex fight series glow bash promo did you get any digits of these ring girls what are we doing man what's the point man i'm cuffed up man you know what i mean Oh, okay. I, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. okay. Good answer, <laughs> you got good the answer. Ring. <laughs> That's I was trying to yeah. like uh, vicariously through you. I was like, man, he, he was like acting too cool in the promo. People like putting tits and ass and glow uh, all over you. I was like, I was like, he's acted. He's looking like Gegar Musasi waiting for a sandwich next in line. But uh, okay, good answer. Good answer. That's the samurai test. That's the samurai test. So you passed it. Sure. Um, another test which you excelled at was the. Manimal training camp May 15th is another one coming up July 10th at the Frivola MMA compound. Uh, can you just you're, you're in the promo mode? It, it is fight week. Uh, sell me, man, and sell the audience. Why should somebody who maybe is a professional fighter, which there are plenty of there, or somebody who is just a weekend warrior in martial arts, why should they attend the next Manimal training camp? Let me tell you, man, I said it last time. If you want to understand different ways to apply like exercises, like how to apply different exercises, definitely go to Manimal Training Camp because those are our exercises that have helped me just uh, like, it's like a gateway, you get me? Like if you want to be a very athletic person, Manimal training camp is like the opener. It's like a gateway. Like I have never like been so open to different types of exercises and routines before Manimal training camp. Like after Manimal training camp, I've like seen my body change. I just opened up to more different types of ways to be um, spiritually aligned, like physically, you know, and, 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 and just like, I say spiritually aligned because you know, this is all comes from the spirit. Like what type of spirit do you have? Or what type of soul do you have? And when you go to Manimal Training Camp, you literally put your feet in the grass, you get sunlight, 
and you and the water's right there, the salt water's right there. Like you go go cleanse yourself real quick, get some cold water, you know. So it's like, you know, Manimal training camp is more than just a training camp. It's definitely like um like just an uh, I don't know even how to put it together, but it's amazing. Like people should go, man. Like Manimal's doing great things, you know, he's he's a hustler, like he's so he's such a good guy, man. He's always like texting me, like, like man, this and that. Like he's so supportive. Just a just a nice, humble guy. And who doesn't want to go to a nice, humble guy for some advice? You know, like, you know, like you gain something from it. So very good to have the right type of people around you. You know, the right, the right people around you for sure. So definitely, I recommend Manimal Training Camp. You know, it's, uh, I want to get my mace again because I lost my last mace. But I was doing. I was how the hell do you lose around. that thing? That's not like was, a. <laughs> it's not like a USB drive. Man, yeah, man. <laughs> so I was like swinging that shit around every day, and I was like, "Yo, like I feel strong as fuck. Like my joints are like more intact and stuff. Like it's good stuff." There you go, John. John Benaducci, aka Manimal Training Camp. You heard it from David Pardo on Instagram at Life master life spelled l1 f e david two more things if you don't mind i really appreciate the time while you are in your element man uh i can feel the the good vibes i'm feeling good things for again june 17th this friday flex fight series glow bash let's go chris machi and uh nick canobio put on a heck of a promotion it's going to be wild as always a great time as always why are you going to be a champion one day because I tell myself every day, I'm the best. I push through anything. I I tell myself word of affirmation every day. So at this point, it just is is inevitable, and I'll just keep doing my thing. I'll keep evolving because I know I will always change. I won't be who I am right now in the future, because I will always change. I just know it, and man, champion mentality is about adjusting, you know? So adjusting to your environment, any, anywhere you are, you're a champ, you get me? So I'm going to adjust to anything and anywhere I am. Amazing, amazing. And I feel like the, the people who are not only surviving, especially the way the world's been the last two or three years, but the people who are thriving, not just surviving, but the people who are thriving, who are adapting, who are adjusting, uh, be like water, as the great Bruce Lee says, uh, those are the people who are thriving. Uh, David Pardo, I really appreciate the time. If you have one minute, I would like to, I found the clip of Raymond Daniels and Michael Venom page. Uh, let me know. Can you see it? It's floating right now. Okay. Okay. I can see it. Okay. You see them right now. They're, they're in the heat of competition. You see this? That's them fighting. Yep. Yep. Okay. And I think, uh, the round's about to end. Okay. Yeah. I think Ray Raymond was, uh, touching him up during this. Okay. So the round ends again, folks, as we mentioned earlier, uh, David Pardo karate, point finding background and uh, Raymond Daniels, Michael Venom Page, some of the best point fighters ever who have also made the transition to MMA. This was a break in the action of one of the most famous underground karate matches. Uh, and then the DJ starts playing music. I'm doing a little play by play for you guys. Michael Venom Page starts to feel it. Raymond Daniels getting advice from his corner. Raymond Daniels starts to hear the music. Get ready. Get ready. He's going to. Oh, OK. Come on. Come on, Raymond. I hope I'm not underselling this. I swear I remember them dancing. Okay, there it is. You see him? You see him? Yeah. Raymond's in white. Michael's in red. And then, yep, yep. Michael responds with his dance. Michael responds with his dance. Okay. Right now, Mike's got the win. <laughs> Raymond just loosening the shoulders. Yeah. Ooh! That is... Okay, now... Oh, yeah, Raymond's taking it back. Raymond's that... taking it back. Now Michael's breaking it down. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I have Michael with the Michael Jackson. Okay, who won that? Who won that in your opinion? Dude, both of them. They're, they are both true martial artists, okay? True martial artists. They are both just legends, man. Honestly. <laughs> I knew I wasn't just 
high AF when I first saw that. Uh, I was like, I know I remember they battled, so uh, I'm glad it uh, it lived up to the hype. But David Pardo, I really appreciate your time on Instagram at Life Master fighting this Friday Flex Fight Series. Uh, the dude is a young star, young phenom. He's got his whole decade of 20s coming up where he will take over Long Island, Strong Island, New York, Northeast, maybe national, maybe international. It's going to be amazing. David, I really appreciate the time. Thank you for the good vibes, brother. Thank you, man. For real. Thank you for having me. David is the man. He's a young man. He's in his element. He's in his zone. He is on his path. He is encroaching on his 20s where he will have the, the world in his palm where he can just dip from this bucket or that bucket or that bucket of skill set jiu-jitsu, wrestling, boxing. He obviously has an extensive karate and point fighting background, which involves the blitzes, as you guys have seen, McGregor, the way he blitzed in and out against Aldo, the way he blitzed in and out against Eddie Alvarez, the way he blitzed in and out uh, against Diaz. Um, Diaz is just a hell of a, a fighter to stay in the pocket, take the shots, and wear out McGregor with his chin. But the point is, Wonderboy Thompson... Michael Venom Page, Raymond Daniels, they come from that style. And I think it is still a little underappreciated, but fighters like David Pardo, they're going to represent well for the karate world. And again, he, he's learning Muay Thai, kickboxing, boxing, wrestling, jiu-jitsu. He's going to piece it together. I'm glad I could catch him now before he is a potential world champion. Now, quickly, David was in his element in nature, and he talked about hitting trees at some point. Uh, it kind of brought to mind the fight and the fighter that we just saw this past weekend, the UFC 275 main event in Singapore between the former UFC champion, Glover, not Glover. I've heard Glover too many times uh, this past week. Glover Teixeira facing Yuri not Jiri, Yuri Prohaska, uh, Czechs uh, own Yuri Prohaska. Yuri, uh, I was reading this ESPN article written by the wonderful Mark Ramundi where they were describing how Yuri was a party boy, kind of a, a, fuck up. <laughs> he was, uh, didn't have his life under control. He wasn't making the smartest decisions, and then eventually he cleaned up everything. He stopped drinking as much, and look how it's it's benefited and paid off for him. He is living the, the five ring, the samurai lifestyle, which I appreciate on some of my profiles I put for myself, modern day samurai. And that's why I really wanted to see how Yuri would do in this fight because there is no running or hiding or uh, verbal assaults anymore when it's fight night, when the cage door closes. Now your truth comes out. Now what is truly inside of you will be expressed. And Yuri sh showed, he showcased grit, skill, heart, will, uh, not quitting, uh, immense amount of determination, perseverance to get the victory, to get the late, late, late submission victory. So he is living his truth. He is living the, the martial arts, humble lifestyle, like a George St. Pierre, like a Khabib Nurmagomedov, now like a Yuri Prohaska. So I appreciate it. The dude now has just so many options. I think he was called out by four light heavyweights, after he got the win, everybody's going to want a piece of the Yuri pie. Good looking dude. Action packed. Reminds me of like a, a bigger Tony Ferguson. Very reckless uh, with his strikes. A controlled chaos. Spinning elbow, spinning stuff, hands down. How many takedowns is he going to have to be? Uh, how many times is he going to have to be taken down before he realized to stop throwing the jumping knee? But that's his style. He, he's a, a coach's worst nightmare and also at the same time a coach's wet dream. 
uh, because of the potential, and he achieved his potential. He's a UFC champion. Holy moly. The highest honor in mixed martial arts is becoming a UFC champion, and he achieved that status. So congrats to you, Mr. Yuri Prohaska. Great win. And the connection that I'm making to the interview you guys just heard with David Pardo, again, on Instagram, at LifeMaster, the I is a one. <sighs> Conor McGregor brought this sport to box office, prime time. He surpassed, he helped make MMA surpass boxing. Now, boxing is catching up with Gervonta Davis, Ryan Garcia, Terrence Crawford. Um, who else? Uh, Vasily Lomachenko, Teofimo Lopez, George Cambosis Jr., Box. Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua. Boxing is now catching up. I believe at the end of this year, boxing's having a phenomenal year. At the end of this year, it will be on par with each other. 2023 will be up for grabs. But for the last five, six, seven years, Conor McGregor has been the sole proponent to get MMA more eyeballs than boxing. Credit to him for that. He got the sport to ESPN. He got the UFC sold $4 billion, owned by now WME and IMG, which they are the agents of Mark Wahlberg, of The Rock. That's why you see The Rock at all these uh, events. Tom Brady, maybe when Tom Brady retires, he'll be doing more publicity and promotion for the UFC. Who knows? I could totally see that happen. Now that Conor McGregor did the due diligence, the yeoman's work to be the, the boisterous, chest-pounding Irishman who could talk his way out of uh, a steel vault. Now the true martial artists, the humble martial artists, like a Hamzat Chemaev, like a Yuri Prohaska, like a Michael Chandler, can really shine. A Dustin Poirier can really, really shine. Where Amanda Nunes, where they don't have to scream on the mountaintops, they don't have to wear uh, fur coats, throw chairs at press conferences. They can be themselves. Them, uh, they can be their authentic selves, and that gets promoted. So, hats off to Conor McGregor for us. No, not us. I, I would have been a fan if this sport landed back on FX or something. But credit to Conor McGregor for bringing in the casual fan who it's appointment television to see the next pay-per-view. I'm sure so many more people watched Yuri Prohaska, that epic light heavyweight fight, the greatest light heavyweight fight, in my opinion, of all time, better than Jones and Gustafson, better than uh, Dan Henderson and Shogun Hua, way better than that. Action-packed, nonstop, again, Poor decision making, but that's what made the fight so entertaining that these guys were going for it. Nobody was point fighting, playing it close to the chest. They were just absolutely balls to the wall, putting it all out there. So because of Conor McGregor, we were you guys, the casuals, many more casual fans who you never know. Maybe they'll step into a gym because of that fight they just saw a couple days ago. They'll step into a martial arts gym. Maybe they'll just go for a walk. Who knows? That inspirational fight might have gone under, been swept under the carpet years ago. But because of Conor McGregor, the true humble martial artists are shining now. So, thank you, Conor McGregor. Thank you, Glover, Yuri, Valentina, Talia, Joanna, Whaley for putting on a hell of a performance. You guys are awesome. Again, this Friday, Flex Fight Series, Glow Bash, June 17th. Our guy, David Pardo, is going to kick some arse and cannot wait to see the young man's future just unfold right in front of our eyes. So, until next time, peace! peace.